Hi, I'm Rob Peterson, calisthenics athlete and aging warrior, with emphasis on the aging part. A few weeks ago, I snapped a biceps tendon. I was juggling at the time that it snapped. If you haven't already watched it, check out my video describing the incident. In a future video, I'm going to talk about exactly how I damaged my biceps tendon to the point where juggling could cause it to break. But in this video, I'm going to talk about the physiology of the shoulder and the biceps tendon, and about how surprisingly functional your arm can be with a broken biceps tendon. The tendon that ruptured is the tendon that connects the long head of the biceps into the shoulder. As you can see, that tendon goes up the arm, sits in a groove in the head of the humerus, and attaches to the glenoid labrum. The glenoid cavity is the socket of the main ball and socket joint of the shoulder. Now, the biceps also has a short head, and that tendon connects to the coracoid process of the scapula. It's thicker and stronger than the long head tendon, and it doesn't pass over the humerus, which turns out to be very important. I'm now learning all about how my body works by breaking each part one by one and then studying that part in detail. I probably would have been better off if I'd learned some anatomy in the first place. Anyway, I'm having surgery to repair it in two days, so I'm trying to film this quickly while I can still show you my damaged arm. Hopefully you can see it here. See, this one's intact. Looks relatively normal. And this one looks funny. The long head tendon is entirely missing, and the short head tendon is really prominent. The weird thing is how incredibly functional my arm is. Like I said in my last video, I had a lot of shoulder pain before the tendon broke. I thought something was wrong with my shoulder. I didn't feel anything near my biceps or in my arm. But after the tendon snapped, most of that pain went away. Now, four weeks later, I'm in virtually no pain at all. Certain positions hurt. It feels like something catches and then, and then releases, like when I take off my shirt. No doubt the stump of a broken tendon is getting in the way of something. But most normal things don't hurt at all. I can lift heavy things. I just went skiing. I could use my poles. I took a couple of falls. Everything was fine. I'm going to show you a couple of things because I'm just astonished by this. You'd think that something would be off with my fine motor control. The long head is involved in this kind of movement. You'd think that at least that wouldn't work as well. But there doesn't seem to be any effect at all. My fine motor control seems normal to me. Juggling feels just like it always did. If I move my left arm quickly into certain positions, it hurts a little, but I don't feel any difference in my coordination or in my basic abilities. Playing the piano also seems normal, meaning that I'm not any worse than I usually am. Even stuff like this that involves rapid movements of the left hand doesn't seem any more difficult or different in any way. And this was probably relatively foolish, but I decided to try a couple of pull-ups. It's probably risky, but I figured I'm having surgery in two days, so if I mess it up more, the surgeon will fix it, right? Sure. Anyway, pulling strength felt okay, although I definitely didn't feel like jumping back into working out. My shoulder is funny, and it's hard to lower all the way to a dead hang, but it's weird how well my biceps seem to work. The injury that I have is very common. Because the long head tendon passes over the humerus, which moves around a lot, it's prone to fraying, and I'm sure that's what happened to mine. But the short head tendon doesn't pass over the humerus and isn't prone to fraying. Plus, it's thicker to begin with. That one almost never breaks. Some medical websites go as far as to say that the long head is functionally unimportant. So most people that have this never have it repaired. My doctor recommended that I do nothing. She said I'd lose about 10% of my strength and that I'd never miss it. Of course, I'm sure that most of you watching will understand that to someone like me, that's just not acceptable. So I insisted on seeing a surgeon. I learned a couple of interesting things from the surgeon. One thing was that they don't put the tendon back where it was. What they do is they take what's left of the tendon and anchor it into the humerus. So I asked the surgeon if the shoulder ends up destabilized because now there's going to be one less tendon that crosses the glenohumeral joint. And he told me that the current thinking is that no, it doesn't weaken the shoulder at all. I'll be testing that theory in the near future. But here's a really freaky thing that he told me. He was telling me all the reasons not to have surgery, and he mentioned that leaving it like this wouldn't affect my strength and that I'd still be able to train. And I was like, how can it not affect my strength? One tendon is missing. And he was kind of cagey. You know how doctors talk? He kept saying, well, 
it shouldn't affect your strength. But I kept pressing him, and finally, he said it would eventually become strong again because the ruptured tendon would scar in, meaning reattach itself to the bone. Then I said, but the other doctor said that the tendon is all rolled up down here and was useless. And he said, well, she's not a surgeon. So I don't know what to think about that. I can't find any scientific papers that describe the scarring in process. Anyway, I decided to have the surgery. It's a routine surgery with a high success rate. And my arm may end up stronger than it was with no danger of the tendon fraying because now the tendon won't be passing over the humerus. Plus, the surgeon said he can fix whatever else is wrong with my shoulder, rotator cuff and everything. It's still a tough decision though. Right now, I'm not in any pain and my arm works pretty normally. And the doctors say I should be able to go back to working out if I just leave it alone for a couple of months. And doing the surgery means that I have to be in a sling 24 hours a day for six weeks and I won't be able to work out for six months. Plus, any surgery is at least a little dangerous. But I've decided to do it because I feel like it's my best shot at getting the most function out of my arm in the long run. And just a quick note here at the end. I filmed most of this before the surgery, but editing took a while, and today, the day that I'm uploading this video, is actually 12 days after my surgery. The surgery went great, and I'm recovering quickly. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to follow my continuing adventures. Good luck with your training and I'll see you in the next video.